the WWF South Africa CATA program with support from the United States Agency for International Development in partnership with a private game reserve in the southern part of the Greater Kruger, undertook a study to better understand how communities who live near protected areas and conservation managers of such areas think about or experience each other, protected areas and wildlife. Using a tool called SenseMaker, we collected stories from 460 people. The majority were from the communities neighboring the reserve and the rest were employees of the reserve and landowners. 300 interviewees were women. More than half of the respondents have matric or higher qualifications and more than half of the respondents had no income. We used different methods in our research, like showing interviewees pictures that prompted memories or stories, or asking a specific question, using sliding scales, or selecting answers from a list. The responses we received can help identify projects and interventions that will address problems or take forward opportunities that will build the relationship between communities and protected areas. From the responses, we identified six themes. One, people's relationship with the reserve. Almost all of the respondents want the reserve to remain open. Most respondents said they trust the reserve. For those who want to see the reserve remain open, the one reason is employment. Many people, especially our children, are working there. Those who have money help us in the community. Otherwise, people will fall into poverty and hunger in a life of crime. But respondents note that the appointment processes should be transparent and land claimants and nearest communities should get preference. Other reasons given for keeping the reserve open is because the reserve protects animals, nature, and their culture associated with nature. Rangers are looking after our culture and nature, such as the animals, so that the coming generation will be able to know different kinds of animals. They help us by giving us an opportunity to see these animals. So if they close the reserve, we'll never see these animals. If the reserve had to close, People will kill all the animals and rhinos. Tourists won't visit South Africa anymore, which will hurt the economy and we'll have fewer jobs. The marula is part of our old culture. Animals are part of our old culture. The culture is slowly dying and in danger of being lost. The mubani worm, we used to eat them as foods, but now we're buying food. Our old ways are gone. A few respondents said the reserve helps people in some way, like with schools, old age homes, creches, orphanages, and digital learning centers, as well as projects that remove alien plant species, help control soil erosion and fire management. Not many respondents visit the reserve apart from those who work there. We as a community, we never benefited from the reserve as we have no money to enter the park. But some get to visit family graves inside the reserve and children often go on tours but some people don't see the reserve in a positive light. I don't know them. I never see the reserve's people here. I don't benefit from the place. They can go as far as I'm concerned. And some respondents highlighted the cost to living next to a reserve with wild animals. They are concerned about damage causing animals and the safety of their livestock, especially cattle, which is very important. Cattle is like money in the bank. Cattle helped us in the past and cattle still help us now. When the poachers tear down the fence, it gives animals a chance to escape, and then people need to go around look for them. The cutting of the fence is bad because animals escape the reserve and kill people in nearby communities. When animals like elephant get out of the reserve, it will destroy people's farms and lions can kill cattle and goats. For some, the reserve is a reminder of the injustices of the past. In the 80s, the apartheid government chased us, relocated us, and they promised to compensate us. We have never received anything promised to us. So I'm worried about this matter because even today, they employed people from far away rather than our children. And for some, the relationship with the reserve is dependent on certain terms. If they want to continue, they must help us. If they help us with water, we will ask that they stay. Two, people's relationship with nature. Respondents connected nature with culture and heritage and importantly, the knowledge of the animals and plants. Many respondents who see nature as a resource specifically refer to mubani worms and marula as heritage and cultural foods, trees for firewood, the river as a water source, and rhinos and elephants that generate money. 
While landowners and other conservationists were more worried about the future of nature, more than half the community respondents were quite positive when talking about nature. However, a few community respondents are worried that nature and indigenous knowledge will be lost. If there's no rain, no marula. I'm worried, our culture is gone and is not coming back. Without water and trees, there's no life here on earth. Three, people's relationship with rhinos. A number of respondents have never seen a rhino but would like to. Rhino is a creature of God and is important. It is not as many as Impala, so we have to conserve it. Our children visit the reserve in order to see this animal that is part of our culture. Our children must know this species. Some see rhinos as a source of income and that rhino poaching is impacting our country's economy because rhino poaching affects tourism. But some are not sure why rhinos are so important and why the rhino is such a desired animal. 4. Rhino poaching Many respondents don't like rhino poaching. They think it is destructive to their lives in the community. The majority would like to see poaching reduced or stopped. Children are no longer going to school because they are involved in rhino poaching and they think they can make lots of money. Our coming children will not know rhinos, only in books. Respondents considered the reasons for poaching. Many said it was for money out of need or out of greed. People get involved in poaching for their survival because there are too few job opportunities. As far as I know, people kill rhino because they don't have jobs and they need to feed their families. Or poachers do it because it increases their status in society. In terms of how poaching happens, respondents say it is organized crime syndicates and corruption that enables poaching with some police and rangers and poachers working together. A few respondents don't mind poaching because the money poachers make is shared with them. And even two people said that hunting and hunting rhino is part of their culture. Five, people's relationship with law enforcement. Some of the participants see rangers as people who look after and protect the animals and the reserve against poachers and assist the community with escaped animals. Rangers are looking after our culture and nature such as animals so that the coming generation will be able to know the different kind of animals. But some associate rangers with conflict who will protect the boundaries of the reserve at all costs. Respondents see the helicopter as a means to fight rhino poaching. It helps rangers move around quickly and it scares poachers away. When I see a helicopter, I already know there's someone who did something wrong. It also assists when a wild animal escaped the reserve. The poachers damage the fence and animals escape. The helicopters come to search for their animals and chase it back into the reserve. The electrical fence is seen as both good and bad. The fence keeps us safe from wild animals, but we must not go near it because it is dangerous. Six, community needs. People indicated that the greatest needs in communities are employment. There simply aren't enough job opportunities and clean water. In our community, we are struggling with water. Sometimes we have to buy water. Where I live, there's no communal tap, but water is delivered once a week far away from my house. What we mostly need is water. The supply of potable water is often irregular. We only have access to water for a short time, especially when we approach election time. After the elections, we get no water. With limited access to running water, many people rely on river water. But pollution and dry wetlands are a big problem. We used to fetch water in the river, but now it is unsafe because our river is full of pampers and running sewage. Other challenges for communities include droughts, livestock and crop disease, livestock theft, crime, poaching, and access to healthcare. Our challenges are drought because our cattle dies, and there are those who steal cattle. We were the farmers years ago, but now we're failing to farm because of diseases. Some long for the old culture and old ways. They spoke of older farming practices that were part of communal identity, that produced healthy foods for families in the community. Now fresh produce is sold, and with that money, people buy processed foods. We used to plow the fields and harvest maize, peanuts, butternuts, and other vegetables for ourselves to eat instead of selling it. Our bodies were healthy and did not get sick, simple. But now we're selling everything. On the other hand, some respondents felt more optimistic and hopeful about the future, saying people need to modernize, adapt, be self-sufficient, and create their own hustle. Still, some people worry about the future, 
concerned that future generations will not be able to experience the reserve in the animals. If there's no reserve, our children won't be able to see the animals and experience our culture. In the long run, it will cost us. Lastly, respondents shared some advice. Many encouraged a greater sense of community and community spirit, and that people should live good, healthy lives. That we need to conserve nature and our cultural heritage that comes with it. That we need to work hard and be good neighbors to one another. I'm very excited today as I'm given time to share my story with you. I was first scared to talk about how I feel, but I shared my story because we must treat each other well. We're neighbors. First and foremost, thank you to the research participants. Every story told is invaluable. Thank you to the Reserve for your support in the research project. The research was made possible by USAID and WWF South Africa.